I've been using this super ultrawide for a little over 9 months and I can't help but notice the massive difference it has made in my productivity and just overall computer experience. In all honesty, when buying it, I had two things in mind. First off, I wanted the convenience of a massive screen without the bezel in the middle, which in my ass doesn't look particularly pleasing. And the screen real estate that would enable me to scrub through my editing timelines with so much ease. At the time of purchase, I didn't realize it would change the way I use my Mac forever because after using this super ultra wide, I don't think I'll ever be going back to the small monitor. Starting off with design and aesthetics. Now, these parameters are not always the most important, but being a design enthusiast, aesthetics plays quite a significant role in all my purchases. In the case of this monitor, at 49 inches, it does look quite ridiculous for the average person. And to put that into perspective, it's about as wide as a 55 inch TV while being only half the size. So if you're in the market for one, have those specs in mind, otherwise it would look really weird on a tiny desk. My personal favorite being an IKEA Calbee coming in at 200 centimeters long, 32 centimeters deep, and there's even a bigger one coming in at 220 centimeters long and 32 centimeters deep. Alternatively, you can mount it on the wall or on a monitor arm. Its curvature also makes it easy to see whatever you've got at the end of the screens. While it does take a few days to get used to, once you get accustomed to it, you won't be turning back. On Mara's productivity, with such screen real estate, there's definitely lots of benefit that come with it. Unlike the tiny monitors where you'd have to close one window in order to view the other or have to really minimize them in order to use both of them at the same time, with super ultra wide you can have three fairly decent sized windows at the same time and keep chipping away at whatever project you're doing. One of my favorite apps that helps me maximize this capability is called Magnet. With Magnet, you can customize how big you want the windows to snap and whatever layout suits you. In my case, I like to have three windows open, my main window at the center and three secondary windows on either side. My personal preference being the 8x9 aspect ratio for all three windows. All I gotta do is click on the app icon on the top menu of the screen and the drop down menu rolls out from which I can pick what part of the screen I want the windows to snap. For example, when writing my scripts, I'd have Microsoft Word in the middle, my browser on one end and any references I need on the other side. Video editing is another area where a super ultra wide like this one makes a huge difference. Even though I edit some of my videos on my laptop on days that I just want a change of scenery, majority of the editing is done on this monitor. In Premiere Pro for example, the media pool and viewer just get so much space than on a regular monitor and the timeline would span an entire city. <laughs> exaggerated that one but you get the truth. For those of you who edit videos, you know how annoying it can be when you try to scrub through a timeline and you're only clearing 3 or 4 shots at a time. That's what I mean. Moving on to the viewing experience, for those who might not know, when you view a flat screen monitor for an extended period of time, your eyes make small but continual focus shifts that leads to increased fatigue. This monitor's curved display helps your eyes maintain a constant focus across the entire screen, resulting in less fatigue and more comfortable viewing experience. Another important thing to note is its eye saver mode, which reduces fatigue inducing blue light emissions and its flicker free technology that suppresses screen flicker, therefore allowing you to work for longer hours with less eye strain. And while on the subject of viewing, we might as well touch on media consumption. As we all know, it can't just be work and no play, we got to unwind a little bit, especially when our productivity starts to deep. In the case of this monitor, it doesn't quite have all the bells and whistles, but for the average consumer, it wouldn't be that big of an issue. The images are not quite as sharp and there's a little bit of pixelation going on. You might ask, what about watching TV shows and movies? I'll quickly fill you in. I'm sure most of you have seen the cinematic parts that appear at the top and bottom of the screen in some of the movies. Well, in the case of a super ultra wide, they appear on the sides of the screen. And if that doesn't quite fit your test, I'd recommend watching on a smaller window. Another stone that can't go on time, especially when talking about super ultra wide, is gaming. While I mostly game on my TV, the thought of doing so on a super ultra wide got me buzzing. Even though I don't game as much as I used to, it's still a huge part of my life. Needless to say, it's like my little sanctuary where I get to relieve some of the stress that comes with the hustle and bustle of life. As you all know, refresh rates play an important part in the overall experience of a game, and this monitor has a 5 millisecond response time and a refresh rate of 144 hertz. 
Gaming on this monitor the last couple of months has been pretty decent. Most of the games I play on it have full support for Super Ultra Wise, and the result is some of the most immersive gaming experience. The reason I pointed that out, if the games are not supported, the images appear a little bit warped. Even though it wouldn't be a true test of this monitor's gaming capability, I've enjoyed playing Minecraft and having multiple windows open which would be a true streamer's paradise. For instance, you could have Minecraft in one window and your Twitch stream on the other window. If you've got to this point of the video, I'm sure you must be asking yourself, why is it talking about the downside? Well, the anticipation is about to be formed. In all honesty, I wouldn't recommend this particular monitor, especially for someone who enjoys their gaming and media consumption, and that's the reason why I haven't delved so much into its specs and model number. This is the Samsung C49J890 and it's got a few drawbacks. For starters, its resolution is in the best form monitor of its size. At 3840x1080, it has 4K horizontal resolution but only 1080 on the vertical which in my opinion isn't just good enough. Next is its color accuracy. Even though it's a 4K monitor, the images appear a bit washed up and like mentioned before, at a considerable distance, you can pick up the pixels. In saying that, it's been around the block for a few years now and if you're sold on getting a super ultra wide, I'd highly suggest checking out the Odyssey Neo G9. Speaking of the Odyssey Neo G9, I recently got hooked with one and I'm guessing after copying some flap on its quality control on the initial units, recent software and firmware updates have made it a lot better. In my opinion, one of the best in the market, which I guess is representative of the hefty price tag it comes with. While on the subject of price, that's another thing you'll have to put in mind because this monitor sit at the premium budget end of the market. For instance, Instance, despite being almost 4 years, it still costs almost a thousand Australian dollars. In conclusion, I'd say despite having a few issues here and there, the pros outweigh the cons and I'd highly recommend getting one especially for productivity and gaming and most important of all, if your budget allows for it. If you've enjoyed this video, here are some other videos that might pique your interest and don't forget to like and subscribe. People of the internet, I'm signing out, see you on the next one.